Hi there. So you bought yourself a Zigbee stick to control your Zigbee devices in Home Assistant using Zigbee to MQTT? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set this up. With Zigbee to MQTT, you can connect Zigbee devices to Home Assistant using an add-on. Zigbee to MQTT supports a lot of devices as you can see here. It supports a lot of different coordinators and also a lot of different devices. Let me show you how you can set up Zigbee to MQTT. For that we are going to configuration, add-ons, backups and supervisors and then we go to the add-on store. The first thing that we have to install is Mosquito which is the MQTT broker that makes sure that packages are being sent and retrieved between Home Assistant and Zigbee to MQTT. For that, go to the search bar, type Mosquito, click on Mosquito broker and click on install here. And when it's installed, I'd like to tick the boxes for Watchdog and Auto Update and start Mosquito. Now let's configure MQTT in Home Assistant. So for that go to Configuration, Devices and Services, go to the MQTT card and click on Configure, click Submit, click Finish, and now it's set up. The next thing that we are going to install is Zigbee to MQTT. For that go to Configuration, Add-ons, Backups and Supervisor, go to the Add-on Store and if you're going to search for Zigbee to MQTT then you won't find anything. That is because we have to add a custom repository. That custom repository can be found in GitHub and that is over here. And this is the Zigbee to MQTT add-on that we are going to add. So we need to copy the URL go back to Home Assistant, click on the three dots over here, click on Repositories and we are going to paste that URL over here and click on Add. Now close it and as soon as it's ready then you see that Home Assistant will find Zigbee 2 MQTT add-ons. So we're going to install the Zigbee 2 MQTT add-on now, click on Install and now that it's installed we have to set some settings in the configuration of Zigbee to MQTT and that's over here. We have to change some settings for MQTT and for Serial. So we have to enter the address of our MQTT server and the port of our Zigbee stick. First let's enter the address for the MQTT server. Let's add a line here and the address is server MQTT core-mosquito we save this we're not going to restart the add-on and now we have to find the port of our Zigbee stick and for that we are going to configuration add-ons backups and supervisors now we go to system we click on the three dots then we go to hardware we scroll down until we find our Zigbee stick there it is, let's open that and then we are going to dev name and copy the value in there. Now we go back to configuration, add-ons, backups and supervisors, we go to Zigbee to MQTT, configuration and we're going to add a line here which is port and then we paste the address. In my case I have a combi stick so I have to add an adapter here. If you don't have a combi stick you don't have to add this. Save it, restart the add-on, let's look in the log if it's restarting, everything looks fine and now we are going to add an MQTT user. So we go to people, add person, give the name, MQTT-user, allow the person to log in, then we give a password, simple password in our case, B 
because we are are only giving the person access to login from the local network. So click that, create, click create again. And now we are going to Zigbee to MQTT and we're going to enter the credentials there. So we go to settings, we go to MQTT and then in user, we fill in MQTT dash user and in password, we fill in the password that we filled in in the person, click submit. And now we can start adding devices in Zigbee to MQTT. First, we have to make sure that Zigbee to MQTT accepts our new devices. So for that, we're going to click on permit join all. And now I'm going to put my light bulb into pairing mode. So Zigbee to MQTT is finding my light bulb. Now I can click disable join and you see it found a light bulb. It doesn't have a real friendly name so I'm going to change that friendly name over here. Let's call it IKEA light bulb. I'm going to update the home assistant entity ID, rename device and if I click on the friendly name you can already see if I click on exposes that you can turn it off you can turn it on, you can do things with the brightness, I can change the color, and I can do other things with it. Now let's see if I can find it in Home Assistant. So I go to Configuration, Devices and Services, I click on Devices, and you see that the IKEA light bulb is over here, and I can turn it off, and I can turn it on here, and I also have some other entities. So let's add this to a Lovelace dashboard. I'm going to Overview. Click on Edit Dashboard. I'm going to add a new tab. I'm calling it Zigbee to MQTT. Save it. We're going to add a card. Make it an Entities card. Call it Light. And I'm going to add all the entities here. So I have my IKEA light bulb itself. I have the IKEA light bulb update available, which shows if there's a firmware update for my light bulb available. And I have an IKEA light bulb power on behavior, which I can use to change the power on behavior of the IKEA light bulb. So now my light bulb is added to Home Assistant. Let's turn it off. Let's add a motion sensor. Again, we go to Zigbee to MQTT. We are going to click Permit Join All. And now I'm going to put my motion sensor into pairing mode. So Zigbee to MQTT found my motion sensor. It's still setting it up. Yes, it's been sent up. Let's disable join change the friendly name it's an akara motion sensor update the home assistant entity id rename device and now let's see if we can find it in home assistant so let's add it right away to the dashboard that i created add the dashboard add cart entities Give the title motion sensor and we are going to add the different Akara entities. So the occupancy, Akara, the battery, the temperature. and the lux. Now you see that the battery and temperature are not being detected. And that is because it pulls every now and then to get that information. Let's speed that up. Let's go to Zigbee to MQTT. Click on Akara motion sensor. When you click on exposes, you see that the temperature and battery are not exposed. Let's try to pair it again. So I'm clicking on Permit Join All. 
and I'm going to put my motion sensor again into pairing mode to see what happens. And now you see that the temperature and the battery are exposed. And now when I go back to the overview and to my Lovelace dashboard, you see that it's filled in here. So sometimes, for some reason, you have to pair it again to see this information. Now let's add the smart plug. We're going to Zigbee to MQTT. We're going to click on Permit Join All, and I'm going to put my smart plug into pairing mode. It recognizes the smart plug. So here it is. You see the friendly name is not that friendly, so we're going to change the friendly name. Blitzwolf Smart Plug, update Home Assistant Entity ID, rename the device, and let's check it if everything gets exposed. So you see again, also on this smart plug, not everything gets exposed. So for that we go to settings specific, and we are going to say measurement pole interval is 5 seconds instead of 60 seconds. Now we are going to expose this. Let's wait a little bit. And there it is, the power, the current and the voltage are there. So. For this smart plug, I had to do a different thing to get these things to be available. Now, disable join, we go to overview, we go to Zigbee to MQTT, I'm going to edit the dashboard, I'm going to add a card for the smart plug. And we are going to add all the smart plug information. So this is the smart plug itself. This is the power. This is the energy. And this is the outage memory. You see that not all the entities are here that were there in Zigbee 2 MQTT. But at least you have some information that you can use in Home Assistant. Now let's set up an automation using these devices. Go to Configuration, Automations and Scenes, Create Automation, start with an empty automation. Call it Switch Based on Motion. Trigger type is the device, so the device is the motion sensor. Start a detected motion, and another trigger is also motion sensor. Stop detecting motion, and then we want to toggle the lights. It's just an easy automation, just to prove that it works. Mm, toggle IKEA light bulb, add action, device, the smart plug, toggle the smart plug, and let's save this. We go back to our overview, click on Zigbee to MQTT, and now you see that the motion sensor is clear, so there's no motion detected, the light bulb is off, and the smart plug is off, so let's move a little bit in front of the motion detector. You see that it detects motion, and the lights are going on, and the smart plug is also switched on. So, setting up your Zigbee devices using Zigbee to MQTT in Home Assistant is a little bit more work than using ZHA. But the Zigbee to MQTT interface has a lot more possibilities than ZHA. So if you like that, you can use Zigbee to MQTT. If this video helped you and it saved you some time, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, tick on the notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.